Hello, this is J. Dan Gill with 21st Century Reformation, and we're just excited today to have you with us and our special guests, all the way from Boston, someone alleged to be the hub of the world. We, I'll never forget that. But uh, from Boston, uh, and we're looking here at Tere and Sharita, the Peyton. So what an exciting time to have you guys with us in Nashville, of all things. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Is this the first time you've been to Nashville? Yes, first it is. Time. All right. Well, this is great. <laughs> uh, the, uh, we've enjoyed having you in and spending the last couple of days with you. And you joined us yesterday at High Ground. And yes. we yes. very much enjoyed hearing you speak. And yes, sir. our fellowship with you guys was tremendous. We appreciate it a lot. Yeah. And thank you for uh, meeting with the 21st century family today, so to speak. And yes, uh, we have a lot of folks out there who have an interest in, uh, in these wonderful things and the kinds of things that you guys right. are doing. So, uh, but give us some uh, background, some idea. How, what got you going in this one? God? Now, I know uh, your background was the same as mine, which sure. was a oneness, oneness Pentecostal background. Right. But uh, so what got you moving in from there to this one God perspective, this one God view? Sure. Sure. Well, Dan, we certainly thank you. It's a, definitely a, a, a pleasure, privilege to be here uh, with you all. We've definitely been blessed by the broadcast and the videos mm -hmm. and the sharing from so many different testimonies and perspectives and, and experiences. So we, we're definitely glad to be a part mm -hmm. of, of uh, this this work, the work that's going on. So we thank you. Um, uh, well, we're happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, well. I, uh, just really briefly, you know, and my wife can can chime in. You know, uh, yes, we we come from uh, again uh, most of the churches uh, that we within our circles definitely were oneness or what you would call um, uh, Jesus only, uh, yeah. and not necessarily in a derogatory sense, but in the sense mm -hmm. that um, you know, if there is only one God, then you know how, how do you make sense of the the prayers and the uh, exaltation of, of of God or the Father towards the Son and the love between the Father and the Son. Um, what what eventually happened was um, I began to uh, people began to ask questions, you know, in Bible studies, like you know, who is who is Jesus praying to? And I think that that really started the you know the searching. Um, you know, the, the normal answer for for many of us was you know, well, the flesh is praying to the Spirit, and. Um, one of the things that really, I think one person that was extremely influential and significant was uh, my former pastor, uh -huh. uh, because he, he wasn't, the, he didn't, wasn't the traditional thinker around the subject, you know, uh, he would always throw out certain things to, to get you thinking about, mm -hmm. you know, um, and one statement he used to always make was, you cannot take sonship out of the Bible or the Son of God out of the Bible um, without uh, the Son, there is no salvation. Those, those, wow. those two things okay. he would say. Yes. All, all the time, you know, and so he was he was one that definitely thought uh, he wasn't afraid to think outside of, of the norm of what everybody else maybe may have been saying. Um, and so some of the things that I may have held to, uh, he was not afraid to challenge those things. If I wow. asked him questions, you know, or made certain statements and he was be like, you know, I remember one, making one statement about the name of God and he said, turn turn Exodus chapter four <laughs> and, and read that, you know. Um, so So again, uh, when those questions began to come, I think early on in my pastoral ministry, uh, that's when I really began to, to look. And I think one of the things that really stood out to me and made me really ask my former pastor even more questions was um, when I began to read the epistles, just reading the New Testament itself, um, when you really read it, uh, and as all the years that I've read it, I, why this never really just... Uh, stood out to me. I, I don't know, but as I'm reading the New Testament now, I'm looking at the the introduction and every last one of them say something about God and Jesus, you know, God Amen. and Jesus, God, God and Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah right. exactly. <laughs> Over and over again, I'm saying, uh, you know, what's going on here? You know, so I, you know, I uh, approached my uh, former pastor and um, we had some discussions about it and I remember him telling me, you know, well, uh, keep reading, go back, you know, and tell me what you come up with, we'll, we'll, we'll have a conversation and then 
you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll and I'll go back and I'll look at it and, and I'll tell you what I think, you know. And I, we, I think it was maybe about a month or five weeks uh, passed, and um, some time passed, and I. Uh, eventually called him back and said, "Well, I, I think I, I have an answer." <laughs> and uh, he said, "Well, let me hear what you have to say." And and it was the traditional, you know, the uh, dual nature thing and hypostatic mm -hmm. units, all this stuff. You know, philosophical. A lot of a lot of philosophical thinking goes into trying to make um, Jesus both God the Father and the Son at the same time. And so uh, you bar wind up borrowing a lot from Trinitarian thinking in order to kind of try to make that work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, and he's and he just got quiet, you know, I said, you know, I was waiting for him to say something. He said, <laughs> he's paused and said, son, he's not God at all. I was like, oh, I, I've never heard that before. <laughs> and so then I got quiet. <laughs> and, uh, you know, needless to, to say, we got onto something else. And <laughs> it was a while before we spoke on the phone again, had another conversation. But, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, so many things that, that triggered, again, just continuing to, to really see and to kind of being being broken out of this this thinking of of this uh, uh, of a from a oneness perspective, looking at God and Jesus from a oneness perspective, um, and uh, another brother had come to our Bible study who was who had come to the same understanding, um, and I guess he was sent to our Bible study to kind of for us to help him to see his errors. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna help him out here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, and eventually, well, we see where we are right now. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we, we saw certain, certain things. Uh, there were definitely conversations, you know. That, uh, so then, you know, and, and obviously you could say it's a strong man argument, but really, you are really saying that, right? Like, so, so then Jesus is praying to himself. You know, he would say things like that. And I'm, uh, that's not what I'm saying, but, you know, we're, you really you are saying that because if, if he is, you know, uh, the father then that's what's really taking place you know or, or that's what you are saying without really you're not trying to say that but that's really what you're saying you know ultimately but again being able to really see and you don't see the humanity of christ you don't see jesus as being human at, at all even though you're saying it you really don't see it you know you yeah. just see yes yeah just one being and uh you have actually two, you have a being who is spiritual who is eternal who who is not human and then you have an, a being who is human who has a birthday he was born he was you know he has a, a, a record of his birth he has you know all of these things uh, related to him that are not have nothing to do with being you know eternal you know uh, so yes yes so when you begin to see that as i began to see that in the scripture it just became very 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 clear that you have god and you have jesus you wow. know and that to be the son of God is no insignificant thing. You know, mm -hmm. it yeah. got to the point where is it not enough for Jesus to be the son of God? I mean, that's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> we, have to, <laughs> so. we have to make him God as well. Yeah, or otherwise, yeah. that's, he's not good enough. Yeah, unless we, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. yeah. but I, I began to really find a lot of strength and, and, and begin to see the power mm -hmm. and the testimony of, of the scripture uh, bearing witness to a man whom God has raised, mm -hmm. a man whom God has exalted, highly exalted, and given him a name. That's above every name. That the name of Jesus. He's human. All of this well, is about a human. Yes. Right. Yes. That it's, he is highly exalted. Giving him a name. That's a name above mm -hmm. every name. Mm -hmm. That's the name of Jesus. Every knee yeah. shall bow. Every tongue shall confess oh, yes. that Jesus Christ is mm -hmm. Lord to the glory of God. And this is about Praise. a man. Yes. This is about a man that was born in a manger. Right. So, it's just extremely powerful to me when I see it from the perspective that really it is, um, and the and the and what God has done through him becomes that much more. Amazing, yeah. Uh, yes. you, you almost can't even fathom yes. uh, the depth of, of love that he must yeah. have for humanity because he chose to do it through a human being. Yes, you know? yes. He chose to give us the victory over mm -hmm. Satan, over death, over hell, mm -hmm. over the grave, through a human being, and that wow. just uh, is amazing to me. Yeah. It's amazing to me. So the uh, mm -hmm. I said one time, and I still believe it to, is the case that uh, it did not really take a God man mm -hmm. to accomplish hope and salvation for us as human beings. Yes. What it took was God and a man. Amen. That's that man Amen. that's our Savior. And Amen. Our, Amen. It's Amen. wonderful. And, you know, when we begin to try to theologically turn him into God, yeah. which everyone wants to do, yeah. they're not happy with him being what he is. He's right. a true human being, the true human son of God. Yeah. We can't be happy with that. We want him to be something else. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we are actually doing that we're losing him when we're turning him into god right. the true human jesus right. to me gets lost right. yes. and when i when i had a transition in which i 
also had come out of my oneness background yes. and realized, you know, I discovered Jesus. Yeah. It's like I never really knew this Jesus and right. the Jesus of the Bible right. until I began to, to come this way. Right. And, uh, and now I, I love Jesus. I think more of him and honor him in my heart, my mind, and my mm -hmm. life. More than I ever did yes. in oneness. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. It's, it's confusing, true. isn't it? This other business. Yes. It's, it's very, all terribly confusing. It's very, <laughs> very confusing. <laughs> and you don't realize it, I guess. We, uh, the, uh, uh, I like your what you're saying about uh, Jesus. Was he praying to himself? Was he talking to himself? Was he all these things? Was he? You know, exalting himself. exalting himself. It's just right. so strange. All this business, but we right. believe that, right. and right. we were sincere about it. We right. we are honest about it in right. our hearts. Right. Uh, but I think maybe our hearts toward God is what caused Him to be able to call us and draw and bring us to see yeah. this mighty power that He has now vested in His Son Jesus and. Amen. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to know God, and it's wonderful to know Jesus, and it's wonderful to know that they are not each other. <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's it, great. it really is. Yeah, yes. I love it. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, I think, uh, doubtless, if your experience was like mine or a lot of folks, then there are people in your life who were probably less than thrilled about your transition in this understanding. And uh, um, that just difficult at times, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so, um, and Sharita, then you <laughs> joined into this this yeah. wonderful bandwagon. Yeah. And I think, yeah. uh, how did you get in, involved? How did this come well, to you? Um, as Tare said, as the Lord began to really reveal things to him, he started teaching it. Um, and obviously being in oneness, and our yes. church is oneness, um, and I hadn't, you know, I wasn't all the way there yet, and so mm. I was still learning, mm. and I kind of put a barrier up because I felt uncomfortable because it wasn't anything that I was used to, and um, he would teach it, and I kind of would zone out a little bit, yeah. and so I wouldn't really, I hadn't really started really searching for myself, um, and so he would tell me, and you know, and I said, you know what, let me start really trying to, you know, go in here because I felt like when I first got saved, there were a lot of things that was told to me and I didn't necessarily understand them, but mm. because they were told, um, I just believed them. And I didn't, not that I didn't search the scripture, but you know, like he said, there were so many things in the word that we kind of just passed by. Mm. And I never even realized, you know, God and Jesus, you know, and and because I just automatically just assumed that Jesus was God. And so I just looked past all of that. And so when I really began to look at some of the scriptures that he was sharing with me, I'm like, wow, there is a difference, you know. And then he began to break down the qualities of Jesus and God and how they can't be the same, you yeah. know. And so he's like, well, you know, God cannot die. But, you know, here Jesus died, mm -hmm. you know, so it was like, well, how could that, you know, and I'm like, wow, you know, that that is really true. And so, you know, I kind of began to search for myself and I felt like, you know, the Lord just was softening my heart. And so I was able to kind of really like uh, receive um, some of the things that he was sharing. And also, you know, he would have Reformation 21 on and <laughs> I mean, he was watching it all the time. And I. <laughs> I was like, you're watching that again? But well, we, so, we appreciate your patronage. <laughs> <laughs> and so then one day I had, uh, he sent me a video and then I was watching it. And then I found myself driving home from work and I put it on. Uh -huh. And then I was listening to it. And then I was like listening to it more. And then I just really was like, wow, like this just makes so much sense. It's just so much more clear. And um, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> here I am. It's <laughs> uh, tremendous. But it did, it did take me some time, you know, in, in the beginning, like I said, it was a little difficult because of our background and, sure. you know, the members of our church, you know, that was there and, you know, they weren't really ready to, um, I don't even know if they're ready to listen, you know, mm -hmm. and I kind of was there. So I understood, you know, um, but it was difficult. And I yeah. remember there were days when he would be in the pulpit and he'd be preaching and teaching and I would kind of just, you know, say within myself, please don't go there today. 
Like, don't <laughs> don't talk about yeah. God, you know, being God and Jesus being the son of God. <laughs> um, because I just, I just felt like I knew that, you know, it would make them uncomfortable. But the more I began to search the scripture, I'm like, it is the truth. It you know, why truth, should yes. we hide it? <laughs> why should I be ashamed of it? You know, it is Absolutely. saying what it is saying. Yeah. You know, it's not uh -huh. anything that he's making up or yeah. you know it's coming out of the yeah. word of god mm -hmm. and so i began to really embrace it and you know just felt more comfortable with it well praise god yeah. i know I, I love it that's uh my wife sharon our situation was a little similar to that and uh but i had begun seeing and understanding jesus really isn't god not not like we've been saying here this uh and uh and then Sharon, when she began to realize I was looking into that and thinking about it, uh, she I give her credit. She began, as yourself, yeah. be, she began to think herself through this mm -hmm. and look at the scriptures that were there and, and began to realize, hey. Okay. So many years later, here she is. She's producing the, <laughs> these these wonderful videos yes. for us. I think yes. that's, uh, yes. that's beautiful. It is. But, uh, well, this is great. I know... Yeah. Uh, as a pastor, you feel responsibility toward people, and I know it, it doesn't come easy then, but yet I have to be in admiration of your determination to follow God, to pursue His Word and His truth, Amen. and to share that with people. Amen. Uh, and uh, I think that's that's wonderful. Amen. Well, it's great. I'm, it's wonderful to hear your testimony and to say this, that you're not alone. It's amazing how many people from different backgrounds right. are coming to this understanding, and we hear from them at 21st a lot, really contacting us uh, quite often. But a lot of good oneness people, too, whom I love. These were my people, and uh, I think uh, uh, we hear from folks who've been Trinitarian, and they're coming to understand this one God perspective. But we hear from a lot of as yourself, uh, hearing from a lot of oneness folks too, and uh, I think sometimes there's an advantage to oneness for oneness folks in these things in that they've already broken with the mainstream. They know what it's like to not be in the popular run of things, right. and uh, what it means to to take a stand against the bigger scheme, the great greater scheme of things in the Trinity. But I think. Uh, so it may be there's an advantage there that yeah, we right. who are oneness can begin to open up and say, hey, well, wait a minute, we're not quite there yet. Right. Even with our oneness right. perspective, yeah. right. yes. we still sure. have some important yeah. steps sure. to take. And, uh, so but I think it was definitely, you know, a blessing, a stepping stone, a, a good solid foundation, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. me finding Christ. And um, it's mm -hmm. been um, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a, a beautiful thing, I think. This this is really not about losing anything. It's about gaining yeah. some really important. Like I had said, uh, I think uh, Joel Hemphill mm -hmm. said very well. He said, "I, I found the Father yeah. the, as a oneness person. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really know the Father. Yeah. I, he was so this trivial. nebulous spirit yeah. Yeah. <laughs> being yeah. right. and." Then he was merged with Jesus as yeah. one being somehow or another. We don't know how that really works because right. he is praying to himself yeah, right. and all these odd things. Right. But uh, but Joel Hemphill said, I found the Father. Yes. Yeah. I think we can Amen. say this too. Amen. We found Jesus, found Jesus. the real Jesus. Yes. The real Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, yes, sir. I think that's Amen. tremendous. It is. Uh, can I just well, then, uh, go ahead, please. Okay. I, I recall when um, the Lord first saved me and I you know, being a oneness uh, apostolic uh, background, I had gotten on the bus and I was just so excited about being saved and I wanted yeah. to just share with everyone. And um, I started witnessing to the bus driver huh. and I told him my background. He said, so you're a Jesus only person, huh? And I was like, you know, I, I had never heard the never term heard Jesus that. only because I'm like, well, I, I guess I am. You know, if Jesus is God, then yeah, yeah I'm Jesus only, you know. But now looking back, it like, doesn't really make sense. <laughs> because we just totally left the Father yeah. out. You know, I mean, we, we, we would acknowledge him yeah. somehow, but yeah. never in this way. Yeah. Yeah, never in this way. An interesting uh, misstep mm. in which you really lose. I think 
uh, Sharon, my wife, has said we actually lost or didn't have the Father, and we didn't really have Jesus yeah. either. We yeah. we thought we thought we had it all, yeah. and in reality, we're missing yeah. it all. Amen. So, Amen. Uh, Amen. Yes, yeah. sir. Are there any particular scriptures or points of thought or teaching that kind of illuminated your minds and and made a difference in your thought? Yeah, I, I think um, uh, all of the, the, the troubling passages, uh, really, I, it just became very clear what they were really saying. I, I think the, the main issue for me with, with John, I think with all of the scriptures that may have been even somewhat, I still hadn't fully understood how, how do they, so now how do they work, right? With mm -hmm. the understanding that you've got God and Jesus, you've got the eternal Father, the Spirit, who is God, Yahweh, and you have the Son, who is human, Jesus. You know, how do how do some of the other verses work? Where you know where the language for some of seems to be a little bit uh, difficult to try to sift through it. But I think for me, um, the anchoring point became when I finally uh, had to discipline my thinking around the fact that whatever I'm trying to walk away with, or whatever we have historically, unfortunately, walked away with in looking at this has to be a misunderstanding because for some reason the apostles do not teach this. Wow. So whatever so whatever it is that that we're saying, they're not saying, and there has to be a reason why. Mm -hmm. So that really became, became the point where I think God began to, because by my understanding that, then everything else started to, to become more clear, like Isaiah 9 and 6, um, you know, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, you know, some of the things grammatically you begin to see, and also textually too, because I think in certain Hebrew text that that verse really isn't even there. So, mm -hmm. but then even if we take the original text, we can see uh, from a grammatical standpoint, it doesn't say the mighty God, it doesn't say the everlasting Father. Actually, you know, the definite article is missing. It's just one long. It's a sentence name, as we, yes. we've discussed in the yes. past. It's it actually says, you know, wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at that, and so looking at that. It has a different ring to it than mm -hmm. than the than the is. It's not saying what we what we're thinking. It's saying then you look at the statements that are being made. Even they're they're somewhat ambiguous. Or in the in the Hebrew, Elohim doesn't always apply to to. It's not always being used that, even as a noun. Sometimes it's being used in that as an adjective. Mm -hmm. uh, Ella, uh, Rachel's birth pains were said to. She said, "I am having Elohim birth pains." They were mm -hmm. so great to her mm -hmm. that she's using Elohim as an adjective. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the word Elohim can be applied to. Jehovah can be applied to men, magistrates, judges, kings. So when I understood that, I understood, okay, well, he's not saying uh, Lord God Almighty. Now, if he said Lord God, that'd be a different story. And then you got everlasting father. Well, that also became not even a problem because then I said, wait a minute, Abraham is called exalted father. So, yes. so, so just because somebody's being called father, that doesn't make them divine either. So, so this really is, this, this sentence name really is a messianic designation. It's, mm. it's about the Messiah. It's about the son. Mm. Unto us a son is given. Unto yes. us a child is born and his name shall be called. Mm. And not only that, in addition to all that, I mean, you had so many different prophets, kings, and people in the Bible that had names that contained yes. the yes. name of Jehovah in it. Jeho Jehoash or Right. Jehoshaphat and yes, all of yes. these, I mean, Elijah, you know, mm -hmm. and, and these names having some type of meaning, right? My God is my king, the God is my judge, God is my deliverer, you know, all of those different things. So, but none of them were divine. You know, we knew that <laughs> they weren't, they weren't <laughs> Yahweh. <laughs> so it's part of the fact that they, they bore such a name as exactly. that, maybe in honor of God. Exactly. Say. But yet that didn't mean that they themselves were what the, right. you know, right. if Amen. someone is, you know, named God is Father doesn't mean that fellow himself is God the Father, so to speak. Right. Right. It's, uh, Amen. Yeah, uh, Amen. No, I know what you're saying. Amen. Jesus is indeed, he is now an everlasting Father to his people, right. to the people right. of God. Right. It, you know, Amen. look here at the me and the children God has given me, as, as said just earlier in that, uh, right. in Isaiah there. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah. yeah, but. It's wonderful to begin to realize uh, Jesus is who he is. Right. And I like that right. much. Amen. And uh, Amen. Uh, it's that God and a man yeah. business, not yeah. the God man business. Right. Yeah. You know, you said something earlier I, I, uh, that I think is really great to think about. And I came to realize this too. Uh, our oneness people, our oneness brothers and, and their background, actually, 
borrowed mm -hmm. a lot of doctrine and right. teaching from Trinitarians right. without realizing it. Yes. I think uh, without without quite understanding what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an interesting thing then that in the early part of the last century when oneness theology was developing early on, these dear fellows, these dear brothers and sisters that were becoming oneness, right. they were all Trinitarians. Right. They all right. came out of yes. the Trinitarian. I say yes. all, generally speaking. Yeah. They were sure. Trinitarians. Mm -hmm. They then were developing and understanding uh, a Jesus name theology and understanding uh, that God is not a Trinity. They saw through that, sure. which is great to see. Right. Really. That's just not not possible. So right. one of those folks have seen that. Yes, thankfully. Yes. But what they weren't seeing is that they were not solving the problems of the Trinity in biblical right ways. Right, sure. Not really. Sure. They, they thought they were, I guess, but they weren't. It's that simple. Right. And I think, uh, so they borrowed a lot of theology, Christology, yes. from right. sure. uh, the Trinitarian sure. backgrounds that they had been of. Yes. So all of this business about God, man, and 100% God, and 100% man. That's not oneness doctrine, no, it's not. not really. It's not, it's that not. was from the Trinitarian right. backgrounds that these folks had come. Right. While they're trying to sort it out, and they're saying there's no Trinity, but how do we, then what do we do? Right. And they began to still hang on to this idea, oh, well, Jesus, he's God and man. Right. Wow. Right. Not one verse said he's God and man. Right. That's an interesting no. thing. You no. begin to realize no. that. Uh, but, uh, but I think that's... Uh, the, the whole business of the son not being truly a human being, yeah, exactly. though in and yeah. hypostasis business, yes. that is all Trinitarian. Yes. Yeah. It's shocking it is. when you begin to be, be fair and honest to, with yourself as a oneness person and realize, wait a minute, where did we get all this? Yeah. Yeah. It all yeah. came by way of our forebears in the oneness movement right. who were Trinitarian who brought parts and pieces of their Trinitarian doctrine with them into our oneness yeah. uh, thinking. Right, and, yeah. Uh, sure, yeah. yeah, sure. And I, I think one of the, you know, when you even just from, without all of the technical stuff, you know, when you just read plain verses, right, just like uh, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 5, mm -hmm. where there, yes, is, yes. there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Yeah. I yes. mean, the, the statements are so very, very plain. Uh, you. Uh, you really have to, uh, the, the only way to come to an, any other understanding is to reach outside of the, 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 the test yeah. of Scripture. You have yeah. to. There, there's no I, other way. You know. I know for me, you know, we would say all the time, Jesus is God. But, mm -hmm. you know, when you search the Scripture, there's nowhere in the Scripture that says Jesus is God. Right. Yeah. You right. couldn't find that, but yeah. we, you know, over and over, God the Father, Jesus the Son, you right. know, yes. being yes. a man, and it was just so clear, yeah. you know, yeah. it's like, well, you know, we know sometimes people mm -hmm. will use um, God was manifested in the flesh, in the flesh right? right? But what does that really mean, right. yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. So, and Amen. you've, you've, you've uh, shared that, and yeah. you've taught on that as well. Yes, yes. Because I feel like yeah. a lot of oneness, that's the scripture that they tend to hold on yeah. to a lot. Sure. I was realizing here a while back. It's so interesting that uh, Jesus was not God in the flesh, right. but God was manifest in Jesus. Right. There's a big difference. Sure. Big difference. Yeah. Okay. A big difference. God is not Jesus yes. right. in the flesh, but God is manifest in Jesus. Yes. Right. But for God to manifest himself in Jesus, even as remarkably sure. and powerfully and mightily as sure. he did, doesn't make Jesus God. Yes, no. and that's yes, that's, that's what we can begin that's, to understand. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. In yeah. First Timothy two and five, uh, <laughs> I mentioned we have a we have a dear lady in uh, our church in Nashville, and uh, she was from a long term oneness background. She grew up oneness, a beautiful person of God, but for her that verse uh, that you mentioned, First Timothy two and five, that just did it. One day she was looking at that and she realized. Wait a minute. <laughs> what is it? There is one God, right. and there's one mediator between God and men. Amen. The man, Christ Jesus, changed her life. Yeah. And uh, yes. Yeah, yes. It's, Amen. It's, yeah. Amen. And it's powerful because the, and I, I think context becomes really 
when you come to this understanding, you begin to see how how important context is because it's so funny because that same verse is right, you know, right before First Timothy three sixteen. So you know that they can't contradict each other. So First Timothy two and five is like sandwiched in between three sixteen, and then there's some other verses after that 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 show again the distinction between God and Jesus. You know, so you can't make that one verse mean you can't allow it to stand alone. It, it has to fit within the context of everything yes. else that's being yes. stated. And so obviously when you think about that, and you have some problems there even with that verse because if that if you're saying that that's God, now you got a problem because now you're saying, because the statements that come after it say, uh, uh, justified in the spirit. Wait a minute, God is justifying himself in the spirit? And then and then it goes on to say, seen of angels, but wait a minute, Jesus said, the angels do always behold my Father's face, and this is in heaven. So so you've got some serious problems to, to overcome if you're trying to make that yeah. verse say something that right. it, it just doesn't say, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. But, uh, so I guess we could say, uh, if, if one wanted to ask, it, we could say, we have found the Father, right. as Joel Hemphill says. Right. He, he went through a big part of his life, he said, I didn't really know the Father. Yeah. I didn't know him as God indeed right. as he is. And uh, because I blended him into Jesus, and then it just became confusing. But we can also say we're a people who have found Jesus. Yes. We have found the Son. Yes. Yes. We've found them both now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you can't have one without the other. Not really. Yeah. Right. You're in confusion. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Confusion can't possibly be what God wants. Amen. Amen. I think if we think that the Trinity is confusing, and it is, right. and even Trinitarians often, if they'll be honest, right. they have to admit, yeah, this is really terribly confusing. Yeah, do, yeah. But God is not the author of confusion. So he's not confusing himself, I think. Right. Uh, he, right. But I think, uh, but it's interesting that the oneness is also equally confusing. Yes. Uh, you know, God is his own father or God is his own son. What does that even mean? And we believe those things. And we would say, what great is the mystery? Uh, that's well, what that would yeah, be the answer. So we just it's a great it's a mystery. mystery. <laughs> you know? we, the don't, we don't have all the answers. You know? well, God hasn't revealed them yet. And interestingly <laughs> enough, again, I guess that's an answer that oneness people have borrowed from Trinitarians because that's what they Trinitarians say. Oh, it's a great mystery. Yes, well, yes. Really, yeah, it really is yeah, a great right. mystery. But it's not a Bible mystery. It's a mystery to God, too, because he doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> that's right. A mystery, indeed. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, it's, it's, there are great mysteries, and, I'm, I'm, and I understand. I love what Pastor Mark was saying in Higher Ground yesterday about this mystery business. But... Uh, but it's not a mystery as to who God is. Amen. That's not a mystery. Amen. Uh, and it's not a mystery as to who Jesus is. Amen. Human beings have compoundedly confused these issues. Mm. And they have to declare it a mystery. But the reality is, what do you think? God from yeah. the beginning is God. And he's been and he never very, changes. Been very clear on that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and Jesus in, indeed from his beginning, he is the son of God, right. not God, but the son of God. Yeah. He is God's Messiah, the Christ. Yes. yes. Not God, but God's Christ. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's liberating when you yeah. uh, I think one of the things uh, uh, that again my wife's experience I was saying she uh, one of the things that she loved about when we came to this understanding is she came to the realization she said I can read my Bible now mm -hmm. and I think that's true yeah. in ways we couldn't yes. before yeah. yes uh, it's just you can read chapter it's after chapter yeah, it's not true. that you don't occasionally have a question sure. or say well what does sure. this mean then I, but yeah. but you can read your Bible in ways you never could. Yes. And I, I love that. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 I know another important um, uh, saying that Tere used to say is that, you know, they are one, but they are not the same. You yeah. know, when he said, just like we are married, you know, we are not the same, yeah. <laughs> but we are one, one you know, and so that was um, super helpful. Yeah. Very, yeah. very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Simple, but very helpful well, for me. Yeah. God and his, God and his son, Jesus are one, are one. but not one person. No. Exactly. <laughs> this is terribly confusing. No, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no, no. They're one, not the same. And I think that was one of the things that I, I think people began to accuse mm -hmm. me of saying that I was saying Jesus and God are not one. It's that some, in, somewhat in our circle. And, um, but 
but they but they never heard me say that. <laughs> they were inferring that that's what I was saying because I'm saying that Jesus is you know I'm I'm drawing the distinction between God and Jesus. God is who He is. Jesus is who He is. They're not the same person. Uh, they're not the same being. God is a spirit. Jesus says that, mm -hmm. and, and Jesus says, "I'm a man that has told you the truth, which I've heard of God." So you you definitely have two two beings, two in identities, two individuals that are not this. They're one, but they're not the same. That oneness has to do with the intended purpose that God sent in His plan and purpose within Christ. Yes, yes. And they're accomplishing, and that's why. And then it becomes all the makes all the more sense why all of the epistles say, "Grace and peace from God the Father and." Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes. Because of that oneness, right? The oneness of accomplishing our salvation. God, it took God and a man, not a God man, you know. So, yes. you know, it just becomes very, very clear. You know, I think when you understand it the right way, then, you know, the confusion, mm -hmm. it just goes away, right? And you, and you really begin, I, I, at least for myself, um, even now, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't end. It's endless. Okay. You know, I, I can read, I can hear another passage that I probably have heard countless times and then I'm seeing something new again about yes, God and Jesus yes. in, the, in the past. It's yes. just, it really is amazing. Or about God, right? When I when I look at the Old Testament how, and I can see just how much we were neglecting the Father, it's it's amazing to me because even the name, you know, and I believe I was watching one of your videos, is used about 7,000 times. Mm -hmm. I'm averaging, you know, it's a little bit under that, but that's a lot. That's a lot, that's a lot of times. Time. That's a lot of times. Time you right. And you and you're like, you know, all of a sudden the name is not present anymore. But you we know, don't we even never know. talked you know, about so. the name mm -hmm. no, for we, a very long we time. Didn't. You we know? didn't. No, at all. I don't. You know. Yeah. Very. It's very. Not, you. Neglected. We thought in terms of talking about the name Jesus, but right. we did yeah. not right. honor, respect the fact that God has a name. Yes. Right. That and as you said in in. Uh, uh, Exodus three fourteen and so on. Right. This is his name forever. Yes. You know, yes. this is this is the case. Yes. Yes. He wasn't going to change it to Jesus no. later. No, no. And Jesus isn't that yet. Was, that wasn't the plan. No. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Amen. Yeah. Very very simple things. Very you know not not very. Um, it's just uh, it's just the the unfortunate thing of having to dig out from all of mm. the things that you you've been. You know, kind of, you've been trained to, to think a certain way, and and as you stated, um, the Trinitarians are confused by their own teaching, and and, and someone is asking the same questions, and unfortunately, wind up having to borrow from from Trinitarian thinking where they're confused. You're borrowing from people that are confused, that are confused. about what their own what they're teaching themselves. <laughs> so it, I mean, it doesn't help. It's not going to help you, you know. But uh, uh, but you're right, you know, because it, 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 when I when I was still trying to figure things out, I would go to certain websites by certain oneness uh, and and yeah they're talking about distinct centers of consciousness and you know all of these you know hypostatic unions um communicatio it yes, made them yes, you know yes. the exchange of properties all of these different different phrases and, and things that you know uh, you don't need right mm -hmm. and, and i think that it got to the point that it you know it, it, it's a blessing to have the degrees and to have the learning that's fine but it almost got to the point where you know, or has gotten to the point where you, it, people make you feel like if you don't have that, you can't understand it. You can't understand <laughs> yes, God. Yes, yes. You can't understand Jesus. Mm. But when you really, but when you really get down to it, you don't need all of that. No, when you read it absolutely not. for yourself. You come to the realization you don't need to have all that to know God. That's exactly. To know Jesus. Yes, Amen. <laughs> you can just take it as it is, and yes. now all you you you've got you know you've got it. You know. Yes, so, and I think that's a that's a blessing. I said people today go are going to school and spending years trying to understand what fishermen wrote, mm. Mm. what people wow. who were just yeah. good, honest, that's sincere, amazing. decent that's people amazing. of the that's Lord amazing. wrote, yeah. and. Uh, mm. And now we spend years and get PhD, so we can tell everybody what they've said. Yeah. But it's fishermen that wrote these things. Fishermen understood these. Yes. Good women yes. yeah. and men of God in the yes. New Testament. They yes. were ordinary yes. people. Yeah. God did not take a, give to us some strange yes. understanding no. of no. Himself what in which we don't know Him. We don't really right? understand yeah. Him. We do know Him, and we can know His Son. Yes. This anybody can do, yes. and you don't have to Absolutely. have a PhD to yeah. do it, or a DD Absolutely. or whatever you want to go get. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. and then teach it too. Yeah, <laughs> amen. Wow, well, amen. I, I think that you know some of the challenges has definitely been breaking away from the tradition and you know adhering to the truth. You know because mm -hmm. you've been doing it for so long, and uh. some people that you love, you know, greatly, you know, they have taught these things. Um, yes. 
Yes. But the Bible is the Bible. The Bible you know, is the Bible. That's the ultimate <laughs> teacher. Right. 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 Um, right. And so if it's saying it, you know, clear as day, you know, right. um, it's just unfortunate because the more you really begin to adhere to truth, you lose, you know, you, there's yeah. some loss in, the, yeah. in that, you know, um, uh, friendships yeah. and other things. Yeah. Because now they feel like you have fallen away, mm -hmm. you know. To them, you've fallen away from the truth, yes. you know, but I feel like we fall, we have fallen into the truth. <laughs> into the truth, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Huh? No, yeah, I like that, that. That can be a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's interesting that the truth can be discomforting when we're comfortable yeah. with our tradition. Yes. And tradition is a very powerful thing, as you Absolutely. know, to, to be able to break from that yeah. that you have been sometimes bred into yeah. or believed from so many years. Yeah. It's it's like in us, right. yeah. the it tradition is. is. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's true, whether you're a Trinitarian or oneness or whatever you may be, breaking from that right. is very, very, it takes someone really looking to God and God working. Yeah. Right. To bring people out of error, yes. I think, is right. tremendous. And you know, I, I, I think and praise God for my husband because he's always been praying and prayerful and in the Word, you know, always. And um, that's something that I always admired about him. When I first met him, it was in Sunday school. Yeah. And um, I just remember listening to him and, you know, hearing his love for God's uh, Word. Yes, yes. And, um, I was blown away because I had never experienced that before. I was yeah. kind of new to the church, and um, that definitely drew drew me uh, to him. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. And you, you all have made quite a team, <laughs> and here you are still. Right. Here we are, are. <laughs> twenty years later. Yeah, been married God, for twenty yeah, years. Yeah, that's tremendous. Yeah. Well, yeah. God knew you needed each other. Oh, yeah. I think. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I love that. Yeah. Well, praise God. Uh, you guys are a gift to us and we appreciate you so much uh, it's wonderful to see yourselves and as I say so many more like you who are coming to this understanding uh, I love what Joel Hemphill said uh, this is a truth about God and Jesus whose time has come yeah. and I think it has come right. and yeah. it's, right. it's great wonderful to be able to share some of these individual and personal yeah. and family stories yeah. with uh, with folks and uh, uh, to show to others what God has done with us, such as we are. Yeah. We're nobodies. <laughs> we're, we're nothing in right. particular at all. Yeah. Right. But God has blessed us. Amen. And Amen. holding and standing the truth, even though it may be difficult. Right. Um, right. As I said, sometimes others in your life will be less than thrilled yes. <laughs> that that you are taking such a stand. But it's yeah. worth it, isn't it's it? Worth I love it. that. It's, it's uh, worth it. I love what you yeah. uh, spoke on at Higher Ground Church Sunday morning. It's worth it. Right. It's worth it. Right. It's not always easy. Right. Sometimes it's hard. Right. But Amen. it's always worth it Amen. to yes. stand for the truth and Amen. stand for Amen. God. Amen. Thank you. And you guys are a gift to us and oh, so many oh my goodness. as well. So such we thank a you. major well, way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We're way out here in Tennessee, so you know. <laughs> um, yeah, we're Amen. just thankful for this Amen. ministry and everything yes. that you all have provided and continue to provide yes. for families yeah. like us yeah. who are feeling alone and feeling yeah. like we don't have yeah. much support. Mm -hmm. um, it's been such a blessing yeah. and encouragement to us. Yeah. Right, right. And prayerfully, people will begin to understand that, you know, it's not about being a part of an organization. It's about being, being a part of the body of Christ. Yes. Oh that's yes, what, yes. That's what it really yes. boils Amen. down to standing up for the Lord. Right. Amen. Uh, we're actually here in defense of Jesus. For goodness' yes. sakes, right. the real Jesus, right. yes. who has been so awfully over theologized yeah. that right. we barely know him because we've turned him into this theological Amen. being, right. creature, right. God, man, God. Man, we don't know how this, but we've we've done this. Yeah. We've turned him into a, the subject of our theological uh, debacles. Right. When in reality, to know him, right. yeah. to know him is yes. to really know him is Amen. wonderful, and to know that he's one of us Amen. is wonderful. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. He's one of us. Yes, it is.